Hey guys, so this video is about how one of WordPress's biggest liabilities is in fact, at the same time, its biggest strengths. There's a lot more information about WordPress and other content management systems in this video, so let's uh, jump into it. So here's an email I got from somebody recently, so I'm just gonna read it off and give you my comments. I have some questions for you about other content management systems built with PHP. According to W3 Techs, Magento, Drupal have been losing market share, whereas WordPress, Shopify, Wix, and Squarespace have been gaining market share. I'll get into that in a second. Joomla looks like it's in a really bad place now. I hardly see any job postings for Joomla on Indeed or in Upwork. There is still some freelance work and indeed jobs posting for Magento and Drupal, but it is, it is not as much as Shopify. What is your theory for why Drupal and Magento have lost market share? And do you think they may be able to rebound or even retain their niche vis-a-vis -vis competitors? Did Drupal 8 become too difficult to use and create more barriers to entries? Can Magento recover against Shopify accelerated growth? Do you think Joomla is dying? Well, the stats are going to tell us that, right? So we're going to look at the stats soon. Lastly, do you think it is a good or bad idea for a noob to try to jump into learning Drupal and skip WordPress? It just seems rather counterproductive managing incompatible plugins and managing, managing different versions of PHP for WordPress. What advice would you have for a noob who is wary of the technical headaches of managing a WordPress site in the long term? I know Drupal has some of its own issues. Dr Drupal get on one and two, migration between Drupal 7 and 8 being particularly problematic, and in some cases, requiring the site to be rebuilt from scratch. Is there no escaping some of the technical headaches with open source content management systems? So let me first make a quick comment about Ray here. Um, he says, it seems rather productive managing incompatible plugins and managing different versions of PHP for WordPress. That is WordPress's big strength and its big weakness. How is it a strength, you ask? Well, WordPress is so big, there are so many plugins out there that can conflict, or you have plugins that are badly written, that being a master WordPress specialist who knows the array of plugins that are out there to use, who understands which plugins are good and bad, who understands how to problem solve plugin deployment within WordPress. These are just some of the reasons why being a WordPress professional can be extremely valuable for you as a, well, as a WordPress professional, as a developer, if you will. So yes, that's why WordPress is an interesting idea for freelancers out there because it is so widely used. We're gonna look at the stats soon. WordPress is so widely used that uh, despite the fact that it's got some major Achilles heels, it's got some major problems like the plugins and so forth. If you can get your head wrapped around that WordPress ecosystem, understand all the plugins and the themes and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and know how to best leverage these tools in the WordPress world, you will be in a high demand and you will make a lot of money. So why did Drupal go down? You know, I think that Drupal was always much more complex because it was more powerful than WordPress. And so it was a lot more work to get up and running versus WordPress. I don't know Joomla, I don't know too much about it as well, but I think it's the same type of thing. I believe architecturally you could argue that they're better built than WordPress. But again, time and time and time again, as I tell people, uh, the quality of your code, <laughs> most end users don't care. They won't know, right? WordPress uh, won the CMS battle because it was simple and easy to deploy. That's it, simple and easy to deploy, despite all its problems. We got to get away from code purity as developers and coders, because sometimes you can get in a way and cloud our judgment about which platform might be best to uh, leverage for your own work or your client's work. But let's, uh, let's look at some stats here, because I think they're going to be interesting to see. 
All right, market share. So W3, W3 text. So let's see what we got here. So let's look at WordPress at the top of the heap right here. You see in 2010, it had 51% of the market share. Dirty WordPress with dirty PHP, 51%. Joomla was down at 12. Drupal was at 7. None of these existed, I guess. Or they weren't taking stats then. Typo, 4.2. I don't even know. PHP BB, I remember that. Well, PHP BB. .NET Nuke. Oh, VBolton. I remember VBolton, 8.4. Media Wiki Expression Engine. Wow, I remember that. I was like the the elite content management system in the day. You had to pay discuss. Oh, yeah, I remember discuss. I get look at it, look at the trend. People are disgusted with discuss. Not good. From one point five to zero point one. Hmm. So there's a whole bunch of. Them. Anyway, let's go back up here and let's look at uh, so 2011, 2012, 13, 14, 15, 21. So number, uh, as of November 2021, WordPress has 65% of the market share for content management systems. So in the last 11 years, WordPress has in fact become significantly more popular. Went from 51% market share to 65, despite the fact there's a lot more competition. So number two, Shopify, I don't know why they're number two, I guess they're number two. Uh, they started in 2014. And, you know, they started off quite small, but they're up to a big 6.4%. So with some work, Shopify will hit 10% of WordPress, WordPress's market share. Something interesting, Shopify is a publicly traded company, and WordPress is privately held, you know. Although Shopify makes money off every Shopify site, WordPress doesn't. That's another story. Um, Joomla it started off at 12% in 2010, I guess when they started taking the stats. And it's a slow slide down to 2.8. So that's not doing too good there. How about Wix? Big old Wix. Wix is rising up. It's up to 2.8. Squarespace, 2.7. You figure with all the advertising, uh, Wix and Squarespace would be dominant. But man, WordPress is still king. King of the web. And WordPress is dominant in the need for plugins and themes. That alone almost guarantees PHP's uh, longevity. So let's go on. Drupal, here's Drupal. 7.1. It's at 2.1 today. So that's not too good. 2.1. Not very good for 2021. Blogger. I remember Blogger, 1.5. Bitrix, I'd never heard of that before. Magento. Here's the Magento. Yeah, Magento is sliding hard. Anyway, so you get the idea. Here's Webflow, new, new to the game, just a couple of years. And they're rising quick. 0.6%. Uh, <laughs> so you get the idea. Oh, let's look at, uh, I want to look at something down here. GoDaddy. Oh, everybody loves GoDaddy. Oh, yeah. GoDaddy's doing pretty good there. Eesh. They actually rose. They went from 0.1 to 0.4. So that's uh, GitHub Pages. 0.2%. So they've been kind of steady for many years now. All right. So what does that tell you about the market? What well, tells you that uh, WordPress is continuing to dominate. It continues to rise up. A big part of WordPress's strength is the fact that it's got a, such a huge ecosystem, number one. Number two, it's got such a dominant install uh, base that uh, companies are loath to get off of WordPress. Imagine you've invested years into WordPress you got dozens, if not hundreds, of articles on there. You got podcasts going on on there. You got all kinds of stuff. And oh, you're going to want to drop that now? No, you're not going to drop it. So there you go. Therein lies the uh, answer to the original question uh, of this video: is why is WordPress' greatest weakness at the same time its greatest strength? Its greatest weakness is that the you got the chaotic nature of their plugin world. It is um, an unfortunate side effect of open source, I suppose. You could argue that. And um, yeah, but it's also its greatest strength because if you can master or become very knowledgeable in the WordPress ecosystem, there's a lot of money to be made. Something I talk about in my freelance course, links below. Uh, if you develop really good workflows, you can start really increasing your profit quite a bit. Workflows is just an understanding of processes in 
that you utilize to build websites, whether you use WordPress or not. So there you go. I hope that's useful. And uh, good question. If you're looking to become a professional developer, professional coder, web design, web development, full stack, front end, whatever, check out my mentoring program be below. I am able to accept new people now. And uh, it's my most comprehensive training. And I think it's, it is the most comprehensive training package you're going to find out there. My goal with the mentoring program is to teach you how to code and perhaps more importantly, to teach you how to take those coding skills and to turn them into a job, turn them into a freelance career, maybe start your own SaaS-based business. For me, code has been a means to a financial end. For me, coding is a super valuable skill set that I leveraged to make me financially independent and not have to worry about earning money. And you can do this very quickly because there's such a huge demand for well-trained developers and coders that in a short period of time, with some good coding skills as a foundation, then good money management skills, good interpersonal skills, good psychology skills even, you will find yourself free. That's the whole point of the mentoring program. So if you're interested in that, click on the link below and you can check out what the program is all about. And you can even set up a personal consult with me about the mentoring program. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. All right, thanks for watching the video.